So there's, there's, there's a, a couple of perspectives that you can come from, Roman. The one is, is that if you're adding uh, weight to your legs that uh, is, is uh, assisting you with propulsion and assisting you with stiffening of the knee and stiffening of the hip and the ankle, all right, and your limiter was specifically that that strength. And for example, uh, a number of individuals who have very very strong legs are not that fast, but they are wonderful endurance athletes. In other words, they do great in ultra distances or marathons and and, and longer races. Uh, it also depends on the athlete's muscle type. So uh, Kevin will be able to concur here. There are a number of triathletes that I tell to stop doing weights in the weight room for their upper bodies because they swim effectively enough they don't need any more weight on the, on their on their upper bodies and of course as we get older anytime we beyond our mid 20s we start losing muscle mass and we can gain so much from from getting stronger but an athlete with a lot of fast twitch fibers will respond with with bulking up but if the majority of your training is endurance training the likelihood of you bulking up in areas that are that are going to be limiting you as a runner are very very slim. Uh, do know though that if you do like the weights and and you do put on some good muscle mass, that the heavier you, you get, the lower your VO2 max will be because that's a number expressed as milliliters per kilogram of body weight per minute. And so the heavier you, you are, the less aerobically efficient you are. But it also depends where your limit is. You know when you when you're doing a long a long race. Kevin, for example, when he's doing a 70.3 race, is nowhere near his aerobic capacity when he's running off the bike, when he's running, you know, one hour and 12 minutes, one hour and 13 minutes off the bike. But his legs are starting to become his limiters, the muscle endurance he has in his legs, the strength that he has in his legs. But it's so important to address the fact that the 90% of the community that we work with will not bulk up as endurance athletes if they increase strength training. And then about that type of strength training, for most people, the more functional, the better. In other words, things like hill repeats. For very high-end athletes, we might look at including plyometrics. There's been a very recent study that shows categorically that plyometric work is very effective in improving performance in distance running athletes. But again, there's some substantial risks involved. And also, a large amount of the community cannot get off the ground quick enough to get those plyometric advantages anyway. They're just not athletic enough. They just don't have the fiber composition to be able to do so. Okay. And Bobby, what um, uh, Nancy wanted you to go over the, the breathing drills again. She was a little bit unclear as to what specific breathing drills you recommended. So could you just repeat and maybe expand a little bit upon, upon just the breathing drills? Yes, so uh, Nancy, just uh, I, I work on a, a very few little breathing. And uh, a couple of deep breaths is a very good idea there. And then the, the, the one that I did mention. Uh, which was very important is exhaling effectively every now and again um, so that you can uh, make sure that your, your, your in and out motion is very very effective and then slowly become aware of what your breathing patterns are so as you accelerate as you become more of fatigue you'll notice that you're taking a, a you know two breaths per step or one breath per step then you at the, probably at your most fatigued level and you can adjust like that it's almost as effective as using a heart rate monitor in that regard and then lastly um, on exhalation creating a little bit of pressure on the way out so maybe pursing your lips slightly or closing your throat light, uh, slightly and added to that the, 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 the latest research that seems to be showing good use of, of nasal breathing. In other words, if you're going slowly enough to be able to breathe through your nose, that's probably a good aerobic development pace for you. Yeah. Hey, uh, Bobby, um, I, think, I think we've hit everyone's questions. Now, you have to pick your four best uh, questions. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if you want to do that or send out a, a quick follow-up email, um, but you had a, you had a, it seems like um, a, a mastermind group of coaches right here who uh, uh, would be good candidates. For, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when the mastermind, when you get run transformation, Bobby's going to take some applications for uh, coaches and, and self-coached high-end athletes 
who want to be on private calls with him weekly where um, you'd be on voice video conferences and get to go over your own training plans. So uh, anyway, these look like some great uh, great questions for that. All um, right. Well, but anyway. I, I think I, I think I'll be able to, to, to call out those those four individuals who, who scored themselves a pair of sunglasses. Um, okay. I think that would be would be Shauna uh, and uh, – I I, th I don't know how you pronounce that, but it was H I S L O P E, right? His slope. That's Kristen. Kristen. Just yep, yep, yep. There and then definitely I, I I already said to Kenna that you know she squeezed in three questions there, so <laughs> she uh, um, she gets the glasses. And then uh, I really liked uh, Roman's question about about the strength and conditioning. Okay, great. So we have um, Roman, Kristen, um, Shana. And um, uh, Kenna. who was the last? Kenna. Kenna. Yeah. Okay. Kenna gets you by attrition. She'd probably be a tough coach to work for too. <laughs> uh, be doing two a days all the time. Um,